Hello, I'm Ryan Boll, a Middle East and North Africa analyst at Stratfor, a rain company. This podcast is brought to you by Stratfor Worldview, rain's premier digital publication for objective geopolitical intelligence and analysis. Welcome to the Essential Geopolitics podcast from Stratfor, a rain company. I'm Emily Donahue. After a a three-and-a-half-year freeze-out, Saudi Arabia and other Gulf countries are lifting an air and sea embargo against Qatar. This after concerted U.S. efforts to ease tensions. But what does that mean, exactly? Emily Hawthorne, Stratfor's Middle East and North Africa analyst, is here to provide some guidance. Welcome, Emily. Thank you. Why is the saudi Qatari rapprochement happening now? So there are a lot of factors at play here, and certainly with only open source information, we're not privy to all the discussions happening behind the scenes in this very sensitive issue. But I think one very clear driver is that you have a new incoming US administration and Saudi Arabia doesn't want to miss an opportunity to shore up ties with that new administration. And by resolving the Qatar blockade, this intra uh, Gulf Cooperation Council crisis that's lasted, as you said, for, for three and a half years, they are Uh, reducing one point of serious tension between Saudi Arabia and Washington. Emily, what does all of this mean for Saudi Arabia? I think for Saudi Arabia, it means that its hardline strategy to try and force a change in Qatari behavior didn't work. Uh, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Bahrain, and Egypt initially issued 13 demands on Qatar uh, that all Um, asked for a different type of behavioral change from Qatar, changing the way that it funds news outlets, uh, paying reparations for Qatari uh, foreign policies that affected these other states. Um, And Saudi Arabia is now putting those demands by the wayside. And that shows that its effort to really try and force its neighbor to change uh, didn't work. And I think it also means for Saudi Arabia um, that they are concerned about wanting to appear peaceful. They want to be mediators in the region. They want, especially with this incoming U.S. administration, they want to be looked at as a leader in the region and not as a source or driver of discord. And then on the other hand, what does it mean for Qatar and the rest of the Arab Gulf states? So Qatar has only so far really agreed to drop lawsuits that it raised because of the blockade. It really has not, um, as we just discussed, it hasn't really changed any of its behavior. Um, That does mean that the inherent tensions that led to this dispute, these sort of deep rivalries and and points of competition and and argument between uh, some of these states, they are still there and can still create uh, disputes and conflicts and diplomatic tension in the future. Um, and I think that's why a lot of regional observers are concerned about this, because yes, what we've seen is the official resolution to one of the biggest diplomatic rifts in the history of the Arabian Peninsula, sort of in its modern history. But the actual sort of deep drivers of that dispute haven't really changed much. So it's very likely that we see some of this uh, tension and, and the issues between these countries. It's very likely that we see them bubble up again. Emily, the United States had a big part in this. What does this mean for the U.S.? The incoming Biden administration has promised a strategic review of U.S.-Saudi ties. It's also likely going to be considering its ties with the other Gulf states. So certainly more uh, fraternal solidarity, coordination, cooperation between these Arab Gulf states is is going to be looked on positively by the incoming administration. The U.S. has military bases and, and forces and significant commercial interests throughout all of these states that were involved in this dispute. Um, so this is this is going to be a good thing for the incoming administration to be working with countries that are speaking to each other and not blocking each other's airspace. Um, but it, it you do ask a question that opens up <laughs> another question, which is what role did the U.S. potentially have in sort of driving the dispute itself? Um, and that is something that um, we're going to have to see moving forward. 
sort of the influence that this new administration has on the Saudi government and the Emirati government, the Bahraini government, the Qatari government, the Egyptian government, the, the five countries really involved in this dispute. Um, it's really an open question right now, um, as we're on the cusp of a new administration, what kind of relationships we're going to see and whether, um, as we saw with the outgoing Trump administration, whether the U.S. is going to have a really strong role in sort of pushing for agreements between these countries or whether they're going to have a lot of sway or, or whether they're not. So I think that's one of the big questions in Middle East policy right now is what is that relationship going to look like between Washington and these Gulf states? And we'll have to see. Emily Hawthorne is a Middle East and North Africa analyst with Stratfor, a rain company. If you would like details on the Stratfor 2021 annual forecast for the region, sign up for our free newsletter at worldview.stratfor.com. That's worldview.stratfor.com. I'm Emily Donahue. Thanks for listening. Thank you.